charming welcoming committee. Gentlemen, I am Constantine of House Orsay, your new governor. I have no idea what sort of ceremony you've prepared for my arrival, but I would gladly skip it, so... <laughs> indeed, indeed, these are rather peculiar customs. I, I see, I see, it seems you were quite intent on serving me a drink. Hello? Cat got your tongue, gentlemen? Would it be those annoying beaks? <laughs> I am truly sorry these doctors should have shown a greater measure of courtesy. Thank you, dear doctors. Move along. Don't trouble the Nords. Pay no attention to them. Instead, just drink. The long voyages at sea require the appropriate treatment as soon as we land. According to our scientists, without fortifiers, you might catch your death, and that would be quite regrettable. I should have chosen death. This concoction is liquid torture. I would think that they would have warned you on the ship. Not in the slightest. And you must be Lady Morange, my predecessor. You are correct. There you are. To your health. Aha! You got your dose of bile too. Allow me to present to you Lady Morange, and to you, my dear lady, my most trusted cousin. Where is the captain? He seems to be preoccupied with some sort of admiral. Indeed. Then I will have to thank him later for this most marvelous voyage. Excellency. Lead me to the palace, I beg you. And, whenever possible, go by way of all the intriguing alleyways. I am dying with impatience to discover this new city. My city! Uh, your Excellence! We must wait for our escort! No need! Have no fear, for I am here to defend you, my lady. I've been scullied. How so? My admiral laid me off. My cousin was nonetheless delighted with your services. I hope there was no misunderstanding. None, I'm sure of it. She just ordered me to give you any assistance you might need. This request doesn't seem to please you. Don't take offense, but it's not pleasant for a captain to abandon his ship. In any case, here I am at your service for a while. My cousin was nonetheless delighted with your services. Fred. Still a quarter, master? Always, as you can see. What can I do for you? We've come to find you regarding the merchandise that Kurt was taking care of. Ah, the commander's cargo, yes. I was told that had come in. And so he's got you working on this. Lucky Kurt. It helps to have friends in high places. Is everything in order? Alas, no. Our merchandise has been unloaded into one of those dock storehouses. They're well guarded. A little less at night, but in spite of that, we weren't able to get them back. Since these crates are registered in the ship's manifest, make an official request. The modification of the manifest might have fooled a quartermaster, but it won't fool the port authority. We'd have too many details to explain to them, and our commander would not like that. What? Is he waiting for us to bring them to him, then? No, of course not. But Kurt needs to find the right storehouse, as well as a discreet way to get in. And he must also mark the crates that belong to us. Why is that? They're already marked with an inscription. Most of the men are illiterate. A colored mark will stick out for them to find. But they need to be quick about it. They won't have the time to decipher a name. I see. Well, let's see what we're able to do. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Hello, Your Excellency. We have found a way into the storehouse and we have marked all of the crates. Perfect. I shall ask my men to follow the same path. One of the crates was damaged. I was quite surprised by what I found in it. Really? To be honest with you, the commander never told me what was in them. I received the order to deliver them as soon as Kurt accomplished his mission without any further instructions. For what it's worth, I thank you for your help. And I hope you can accept this modest token for everything you've done. If you have another moment, Your Excellency, I would like to ask you for your help. We have a serious problem that I did not hear of until recently. A problem that concerns you closely. I'm listening. I was told that some of our soldiers have been extorting large sums of money from the town merchants under the pretext of financing their protection. Are you telling me that the Guard is extorting merchants in our city? 
Indeed. Some merchants have been assaulted, and one of them has even been found dead. I hope you don't intend to conceal this information. If my cousin learns of this... Oh no, certainly not, Your Excellency. We intend to punish the guilty party with the greatest severity. But the merchants refuse to give us the slightest testimony. The guard frightens them, and rightly so. We won't be able to put a stop to these crimes without outside help. <sighs> Count on me. I'll take care of it. No, thank you. Greetings. You look like someone who would know how to use a blade. If you're looking for the best steel, you're in the right place. Weapons, armors, ammunition, I have it all. And if you have a special request, my associates will be glad to make it for you. I'm currently investigating an extortion case involving the guard. Are you one of the merchants who has been threatened? Uh, no, not at all. And I've never heard of this business. Someone must have lied to you. Really? Come on. If you want these guards to be arrested, you need to talk to me. I mean no offense, but you won't be able to do anything. And snitching don't end well. I want to hold on to my business and my life. How about some new armor, Your Excellency? I was told that someone found a merchant's body. Did you know him? Of course. The town isn't that big. We all know each other here. Poor Reno. We found his body on the street by the port. He was beaten to death. One of his associates half-heartedly took over the shop. Have the culprits been found? No. Listen. Nobody wants to talk about this. We don't want any trouble. It's been months since it happened. An investigation's not gonna bring him back. You are obviously a victim of these bandits. One of your people is dead. Yet you refuse to help me. Why? It's precisely because one of our people is dead. Now, you can either buy something or let me get back to work. Because I'm not gonna say one more word about this case. Sire! I am pleased to welcome you to the best wine and spirit shop in Tierfredee. If you're looking for something to accompany a fine meal, or for a gift for someone, you've come to the right place. Thank you, but I'm not here for that. I was told a merchant had been found dead. Really? Oh, I didn't know. No one told me about that. What was his name? Come on, don't take me for a fool. You know very well who I'm talking about. I don't, really? I don't. So, what sort of wine would you like to pair your food with? You need something strong when eating game. I'm conducting an investigation. Some merchants are being extorted by members of the guard. Uh, are you sure? It's probably just a nasty rumor. Someone must have misinformed you. Come now, I'm the legate of the congregation. If guards threaten you, I could arrange protection for you. Threats? No. I assure you. You're obviously terrified. Don't you think it's better to tell me everything? Listen, I've no desire to get into trouble. Please leave me. But if you don't help me, you will never be rid of these guards. I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. Excellency, welcome back to my modest shop. It is an immense honor for me to be of service to such noble clientele. What might I do for you? I'm conducting an investigation. Apparently, some merchants are being extorted by some members of the Guard. Really? That's... that's terrible, Your Excellency. As Legate, it is my duty to ensure the safety and well-being of the citizens of our town. So please, if you have any information... I... I don't know anything. Really. I have only been here for a few months. My partner, who ran the shop before me, had a very bad encounter. And you fear the same thing happening to you? This is what happens around here. So I prefer to hold my tongue and do what is expected of me. If you denounce them, we could end this and charge these men for their crime. I can't take that risk. There are so many of them. Also, I would not be able to name them. Now, 
I would like to get back to my work. What we need is the money to return. Do you understand? We are very monitored. I have a plan to stop the culprits, but I'm going to need your help. The next time one of these guards comes to squeeze money out of you, you must ask for more time. The man will threaten you, of course, and he will certainly bring his accomplices. But when they come back in full force to make you pay for your audacity, we will be there to apprehend them. And if your plan fails, I'll end up like Renault. You don't understand. Are you not tired of giving them your share of the profits? And do you not want to avenge your partner? He was my friend. And his death really upset me. But I don't want to end up like him. Sorry, Your Excellency. And what if I gave you money to pay for it? If the plan fails, you only have to give them that money. They have no interest in getting rid of those who earn them so much. You are not wrong. Very well. I will do what you ask of me. But for God's sake, when they threaten me, intervene right away. Fear not. We will not let them harm you. When should they be returning? It's hard to predict. Given their habits, I would say... In two days, maybe? Perfect. I will not fail you. Atuai! Sien srati dao quint! Tate gudach me in! Attention, soldier! Let me pass. I must see the chief of your village. <laughs> Whatever could be so funny. Now, who would you be to seek an audience with the governor? I am Siora, daughter of Vladnid. My mother is Amal, the chief of our clan. I am here as an emissary of my people, and I must see your chief, your governor. So you are a princess, then? A what? Let her pass! Your Majesty, I shall present you to the governor. Come. Princess, Majesty, you are most confusing. But thank you for your help. There you are, dear cousin. What is this? Who is this amazing person in your company? I am Siora, daughter of Vladnid, daughter of Meb. My mother is Dimal, the chief of our clan. I am honored to make your acquaintance, Siora. <gasps> this is incredible. You look so much alike, you could be related. If you would allow me, Princess, I would like to confer a mission to my cousin. You need to visit the governors of the bridge and Teleme to give them my formal regards, that sort of thing, but also to discover what they've managed to learn. They've been here much longer than we have. Perhaps they've made some inroads to finding a cure for the Malachor. Forgive me, Mal, but I have a request for you. My people needs your help. I thought we might discuss matters together at leisure, but please, speak your piece. The Alliance, the Bridge Alliance and my people are at war. My mother has sent me to you in search of allies. I fear that without your help, our clan will suffer great horrors. We have already lost so many souls. Hmm. This seems a sensible request. You know, though, we cannot go to war with our neighbors. Perhaps there is a way to negotiate a ceasefire, the time to see things more clearly. Excellent idea. I would be completely lost without you. Go and parley with, um, the Queen, dear cousin. Try and put an end to confrontations for the time being. I will come with you. It will take more than one person to convince my mother to lay down our weapons. Perfect. Take Kurt along with you and anyone you feel useful. I've been told that the roads are not safe. Safe travels, dear cousin. And watch out for yourself. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. Thank you for coming. I know that you're very busy, but I need your help. I'm listening, sir. This island is vast, and we only know a tiny part of it. As you know, your uncle has asked me to draw maps to facilitate the merchant's travels. Alas, I'm slightly too old to be roaming the paths, setting up camps here and there. 
So I'd appreciate it if, as you travel, you mark the places you deem to be safe on your map. Very well. I will take care of it, Professor. Excellent. I knew I could count on you. Uh, one more thing. Do you remember that gigantic creature that you defeated in Serene? Uh, bringing a specimen to the city was obviously not a good idea. An accident was inevitable. But according to my sources, there are others of them on this island, and your uncle wishes to know more about them. I know that a scholar of the Alliance, Professor Serafedin, has also taken an interest in these creatures. I tried to contact him, but apparently he disappeared during an expedition to study them. Naturally, I cannot ask you to rummage through the entire island looking for him, but if you can find any trace of him, his studies on these giant creatures could be immensely useful. Very well. If I find anything out, I'll let you know. The road to knowledge is long and difficult, but this is the price of wisdom, Desade. Who do you think you are? By what right do you enter the home of our queen? I'm the emissary of the Congregation of Merchants. I've come to meet your leader. Come now, Arwant. You are not a watchdog. Where is my mother? Siora, I didn't see you. You have come too late. Your mother has gone to wage a war. They left for Didekid Nadageis only a few hours ago. Oh no. We need to catch up with them and avoid the shedding of blood. Please, haste. Very well then. Let's be off. Wait. We should go left here. It's a more difficult path, but it's much shorter. Look at the tracks. They chose to take the path on the right, it would seem. Before a battle, it makes sense that they wanted to avoid a path with more danger. If it is dangerous, let's not risk braving it when time is against us. We risk meeting a great many beasts. But if we follow the warriors, we risk catching up with them too late to sway them. <laughs> You are too late, Siora. Mother has fallen, and we are defeated. No, no, no. This is not fair. I am so sorry. Who is this man? He resembles one of us, but is dressed like a Renaigze. I am the ambassador of the Congregation of Merchants. I, I'm sorry for your loss. The Congregation? And what side are you on in this war? Those that massacre our people. Esel, calm down. You know that mother sent me to seek out allies. You show up when the fight was nearly over. Was this part of your plan? You know that these monsters are taking our own. They must make honorable amends. The congregation is neutral. We hope to stop this battle. Stop this battle? You are mad or a dreamer. This battle was destined. Our folk disappear one soul after the other since you arrived. We are not going to let this happen. You've already lost one battle and haven't had enough. You want to wage another? That's what I thought. You are like them. You think your life more precious. From which wood you are carved? Esseld. That's enough! Have you calmed down yet? You... defeated me. But that changes nothing. These monsters massacred my mother and my people. I will not allow this crime to go unpunished. Esseld, rather than fighting amongst ourselves, we should be tending to the wounded. You speak truly. 
I am too weak to fight or to help you. I shall return to the village. Quawel and Silk, little sister. We must also find my mother. Her body if... If she has passed on to death. Look at all this horror. How do you hope? Look for her banner. She carries the mark of our clan. Yourself. You're acting like a beast. A beast has far more majesty than these monsters who have traded their souls. They have taken her. The queen. They took her. Then she must still be alive. They would not have bothered to carry away a corpse. She would have chosen death before capture. They must have wanted her alive. We must find her. This is the first time I've seen these drawings so closely. You've never come here. You certainly seem to know the place. This site is sacred and taboo. Everyone knows where it is, but no one ever comes here. All these colors are so beautiful. I never would have imagined that they could create something so delicate. Who are you talking about? Of those who built these lodgings. That my ancestors vanquished in a past war. You know who they were? I only know the legend. The legend of Dida Kid and Nadaige. I'm listening. It is said our people lived peacefully until the men appeared from the sea, intent on making our lands their own. They dug great caverns into the earth, ripped down our forests, destroying everything in their wake. They were evil. The warriors killed so many people that even their own people came to fear them. Here, they built a terrible city that spewed out clouds of cinder and death. Our kings and queens were desperate. They went to the heart of our island, and the island heard them. From the woods appeared the first guardian. He was taller than a city, and with each step it smashed a lodging. It was a guardian of Rat, and the city could not resist him. Since then, the earth answers our call for magic, and in exchange, we become all Manawi, in keeping with the pacts our kings and queens once made. It is a very sad and terrible legend. I wonder who these people from the sea could have been. Well, the people from the continent, no doubt. Our Malachor might well be the cursed result of that war from another age. We have nothing more, nor anyone else to find here. I must report all we've learned to Constantine. On all Manawi, my mother is still held in this outpost near Vagigido. I must do everything I can to free her from the lion's claws. So will you accompany me? We will do everything we can to free her. Do not worry. Let's go. Halt! 
Who goes there? De Sade. I am the legate of the merchant congregation. Oh, well, you can come in, Your Excellency. But this savage, on the other hand... Am I the one you call a savage, Renaigse? This young lady is the princess of her people, and she is with me. As such, I would appreciate if you let us through. Very well, Your Excellency. Please go and find the captain. I'd feel better knowing that he gave you his endorsement. Well, who are you? De Sade, legate of the merchant congregation. Allow me to introduce Siora, the daughter of Queen Bladnid, whom you faced on the battlefield. We understand that you brought her mother here, and I would like to negotiate her liberation. A liberation? That'll prove difficult. She's dead. No! You! You let her die! You may even have finished her off like an agonizing animal! We didn't need to. When we collected her up from the battlefield, she was severely wounded. She died on the way to the camp. I want to see her body, Honol Manawi. Please. I must see her. Can we see her, Captain? If you're the one who's asking, Your Excellency, it should be possible. You're in luck. We were thinking about getting rid of it, but we received the order to keep her body. It's still at the infirmary. Ask the doctor. He'll show it to you. Thank you, Captain. So who are you? Are you looking for a doctor? I am the legate of the congregation, and this is Siora, the daughter of the queen whose remains you're keeping. I would like to see her. I need to see her. Please. My condolences, madam. The body of your mother is back there in the room on the left. Not... No. I should give you some privacy while you're mourning. We won't be far. And the worst tear too, my dear. Men sit down on me, Frichtemann. I must take her with me on Almanawi. We must perform the rituals. The captain said that he was instructed to keep her body. It will not be easy to convince him to disobey. I do not care about the captain's orders. She is my mother. She must be given back to the earth. So, let's go back to see him and try to make him change his mind. You can try, but with all due respect, I doubt that you will succeed. He will not want to draw attention to himself by disobeying this order. What do you mean? I believe he is a traitor, and that he made a deal with Telemi. Those are some serious accusations, even for a member of the Guard. Why would you believe such a thing? I overheard a conversation that got me thinking, and I also saw certain documents. We could use them to pressure him. Did you take them? No, that would be too risky. I do not want to get into trouble. But I suppose they would still be amongst his other belongings. Will they let us rummage through this place without protesting? Most of the guards returned to Hikmet after the battle was over. If you are discreet, you should be able to enter the officer's building. Thank you for your help, Doctor. Your Excellency, what do you want? Why are you at war against the natives? Because they reject our presence. They've been attacking us for months. These savages, they stubbornly refuse civilization, and our men pay the price. We can't let them slaughter us without reacting. Since you arrived here, you have destroyed the forest and ripped open the earth, and people disappear in our villages, the on all Manawi first. We are only defending ourselves, and we are the savages. Since we've defeated you, you can believe what you like. Anything else? We would like to retrieve the remains of the Queen. Bring her back to her people and her family. That will not be possible, Your Excellency. As I told you, the Governor specifically asked us to keep her. He wants her delivered to one of his scholars who wanted to study her. Captain, I insist. Let us take this body with us. I have orders, Your Excellency. I've already told you. It is my mother we are talking about. My mother, whom you let die by dragging her all the way here. Give her back to me, or I swear that I will never leave you in peace. This isn't the right way to approach this, Siora. Come. 
This man is as cold as stone. I'm afraid we have no choice but to pressure him now, like the doctor told us. We will have to be discreet if we want to find these documents without getting caught. Well, Captain, you have some peculiar friends for a man who obeys the Alliance. You? What are you doing here? We stumbled upon some strange documents and wanted to see for ourselves if there was any truth to them. Sorry, my friends. If you want our shipment, then we need to get rid of this nosy legate. <laughs> Enough! I surrender! I would never have thought that you would dare to attack allies of the congregation. <laughs> it seems to me that you were the one who attacked. How did you put it? This nosy legate. Had you simply listened to us, Captain, this fight would not have taken place. All we wanted was for you to respectfully deliver the body of the Queen to her village. And will you stay silent about what you saw? We're neutral. Trading amongst yourselves does not concern us. In that case, very well. I'll return to the outpost and ensure it's done. Now I would like for us to return to my village. I am eager to reunite with my sister. In that case, let's return to Vedrais. Ascent. Our mother. I know Siora. And Tirse. Some men delivered her remains here. They said that it was thanks to you. And the Renagze legged. Thank you. We will be able to pay homage to our mother. Why are there mind shakers here, Aselt? I meant to tell you about it. They came saying that our mother had made an agreement with Teleme. But Mater did not tell me about it. She didn't say anything to me either. I do not like this, Iselt. These people want to drive us away from the land. I know. But we need help after the defeat. And they say that she made a promise set in stone. The spirits of the people of our village would have to go to the light, and in exchange, they'd help us against the lions. This is impossible. Mater would never have done such a thing. They are lying, I'm certain of it. They may be. But if there really is a promise set in stone, we cannot break it. And we will have to bury our mother according to their rituals. We must verify it. I will not stand there while these mind shakers take our village. Karanz, do you need something? I've never heard you talk about your father. Who was he? He was the Donegad of our clan. He died many cycles ago, but... This memory is still painful, so we usually avoid the subject. What happened to him? He was killed as he tried to escape the lions who wanted to capture him. My mother never really recovered from it. This is one of the reasons why she decided to go to war. Anything else? I must leave you. See you later. Cousin! <laughs> you have returned to me. Your absence was sorely felt. We don't appear to be in top form. A house intrigue's keeping you from finding proper sleep. <sighs> no, nothing to bring me nightmares as of yet. I'm blaming it on the change of diet. Now, tell me what adventures you've been up to. If you only knew how bored I grow behind these walls. Any news of your parents? No. With the time it takes to travel to the continent, it's not surprising, but... I don't miss them. My father's next letter will certainly be full of his usual disdain. As for my mother, you know her. She's probably too busy planning her next assassination to have noticed my absence. Any news of your parents? No, my father. She's. Pro we were not able, alas, to stop the clash between the forces of the Alliance and Siora's clan. We arrived at the village in the battlefield too late. The Queen fell. I'm extremely sorry for your loss, Princess. Thank you. My sister survived, fortunately, and we are recovering from this tragedy together. 
But our clan was extremely weakened by this battle and by recent events. We shall keep a close eye on the Bridge Alliance and their undertakings. Rest assured. You should know that the battle took place in the middle of ancient ruins. The ruins were quite strange. We discovered a fresco that I'm certain was crafted by continental hands. Really? And how ancient are these ruins? Could they date back to the first landings of the Bridge Alliance? They date much farther back than their arrival would explain. My mother and my grandmother have always known them. Siora told me of a legend that spoke of them, about a people from the sea that were vanquished there. Do you think it was the Norts? It is not our custom to found a landlocked settlement. We have our islands and it is enough for us. If they are ancient, perhaps your people once practiced older customs. This story is troubling, but it reminds me of something that I once read in the reports of Lady Morange. You should go and find her. Perhaps she could tell us more about them. Very well. Anything else? I'm going to leave now. Goodbye, Constantine. Look out for yourself. Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see you again. Have you seen anything to your liking? What might I help you with? So? Did they take the bait? Yes, Your Excellency. And I am very happy to see you. One of them came to the shop yesterday. He gave me 24 hours to raise the money required, which means that the entire gang could appear any minute now. Perfect. I'll hide and wait for their arrival. And rest assured, I will not let them go. I hope you have what we're looking for, my good friend. Our man with the silver coin is not known for his patience. Well, I, I moved heaven and earth to collect the sum, but alas, I, I ran out of time. More fool you if you think Egon will be satisfied with your sorry excuses. You know what happens to those who refuse to pay. Leave this man alone at once. You're under arrest. We'll see about that. And who will stop us? We are the guard. You certainly don't deserve such a name. Bunch of cowards. Yield without a fuss and you'll have the right to a trial. Really? And then it'll be the gallows. Do you think we're pushovers? I'm eternally grateful, Your Excellency. You saved my trade. And my life. Stay alert. Their leader was obviously not present. I heard about the man with the silver coin, but this is the first time they told me his name. If they let him escape, it's only because they were thinking of killing you. I beg you, find this Egon and stop him. None of us will be safe as long as he's free. Don't worry. I don't intend to let him go. So, men, how's it going? Everything's fine, Lieutenant. Nothing to report. All our friends are quiet. Perfectly quiet. As soon as they hear about a silver coin, they start trembling. Good. It would be a shame to have to make another example of them, right? Oh, there's no need, Lieutenant. They've been as sweet as lambs since... Renault's accident. Accidents happen so quickly. I'm waiting for another delivery today. Have you seen your comrades? No, they must have stopped at the tavern on the way. As soon as we see them, we'll send them your way, Lieutenant. I hope those idiots aren't drinking my dew. No one would dare do that to you, Lieutenant. I hope not. Or I'll have to remind them that the silver coin can shake everyone, even the guards. Well, I'll leave you. I have urgent business to attend to. Now, don't forget to send me those drunkards. Farewell, Lieutenant. There's no... Who are you? You're following me? Indeed. We would like to talk to you about the silver coin, Egon. Egon? You must be mistaken. I don't know anyone by that name. Do not take us for fools. We heard you speak with your men. I don't know what you've heard, but you're wrong. I'm not Egon. Regardless, you are implicated in a murder and in the extortion of merchants. You are therefore under arrest. And we will finish by having you tell us who Egon is and where to find him. Oh yes, we'll see about that. So... Have you finally decided to follow us? So you can torture me. You can do whatever you want. I'll not tell you anything. I don't know who Egon is. I'm just a middleman. You're wasting your time. You must know more than you're willing to say. Come on. 
I'd rather die. Hello, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? I conducted my investigation on the extortion organized by members of the Guard. I think I've put an end to it, at least temporarily. Unfortunately, I had to kill some of them as they were about to attack a merchant. But there are still some other soldiers involved that I should tell you about. Thank you, Your Excellency. I will have these men arrested immediately. These foolish brutes not only harm your merchants, but the entire reputation of the Guard. But you said you've only put an end to it temporarily. What makes you think this criminality might resume? Their leader is still on the loose. They call him Egon, although I doubt it's his real name. I got hold of one of his lieutenants. He was carrying a silver coin, which seems to be a symbol of recognition between the gang members. But the man preferred to die rather than tell us anything about his leader. Loyalty or terror? Terror, I fear. From the merchants to the guards, everyone seems to tremble in front of this Egon. I don't know any guard of that name, but as you said, it's probably a pseudonym. Here, Your Excellency, take this. On behalf of the guard, to thank you for settling this case. And rest assured that I will conduct a thorough investigation on my side. I'll also make sure that in future, the city guard is made up only of men of trust. Thank you. I will return to see how your investigation is going. I don't take this matter lightly. Is there anything else? No, thank you. Karanz, do you need something? The first time you saw me, did you really think I was a native? Aside from the way you dress, you resemble a native. I have never seen an Onol Manawi amongst the Rinagse before. Is it so surprising that I made this mistake? No, I understand. And I hope that this singular appearance makes me more attractive to you. Perhaps if your difference wasn't merely physical, but your heart is evidently the heart of a Renaixe. Anything else? I'm sorry about what happened to your mother. How are you feeling? Unwell. I am angry. And I feel an immense void within me. I blame myself for not having been on this battlefield with her. I understand and I'm really sorry. I wish I could have arrived here in time to prevent this war. Thank you, Honol Manawi, but it was too late. I should have realized this and stayed by my mother's side. Anything else? Do you have anyone? A friend, perhaps? ...whom you can talk to in this trying time. I usually confide in my sister, but she's suffering too. And I think she resents me for not having been there when our mother needed me. I know we've only known each other for a little while... ...but if you need someone to talk to... ...I'm here. Thank you, Onol Manawi. You are a good person. And I am glad that you are my friend. Anything else? I must leave you. See you later. 